Okay, IED. Uh, this is going to be Activity 2.2.5 CAD Design Tools, and we are creating the water heating tube uh, part that goes along with the coffee maker on the inside. And uh, we, we have some skills in CAD drawing, and we're going to try to use a couple of new ones. Uh, specifically, we're going to be using the sweep feature in order to create this tube. Um, I know in the lesson they advocate the use of the revolve tool up at the top, but if we're using on shape, there's actually a lot easier way to do that. So I'm going to teach it to you that way, and we can use the revolve tool for other stuff later. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't make sense to use it because there's just an easier way to go around it. So, and also another thing to say about on shape, and you know we have to be using on shape because this is a COVID year, and it makes sense to use in our Chromebooks, but um, Autodesk Inventor and Fusion 360 have really easy ways to create threading. So you can see how there is uh, threads on the bottom part of this part so that it can be screwed on and screwed off to make it uh, interchangeable. Uh, Onshape doesn't really have inbuilt useful ways to create threading. It's a little convoluted on how to actually create it. So I'm going to make that a separate video on how to actually create the threads in this part. We're going to focus just specifically on this shape right now. The big thing that I'm going to focus on at this current moment is using this uh, shape. It's like a U-shaped um, part. And I'm trying to think about the things that I'm going to use to create this object. So what functions am I going to end up using? So I'm trying to plan this out before I just jump straight into it. Because if I just jump straight into it, I'm going to look like an idiot on YouTube, which isn't too different from normal. But at least I have a plan in mind. So I'm thinking in this case we have a path that goes around this direction and then all the way through. That's an excellent candidate for the uh, sweep tool. So what we can do is we can just create this path down the middle and then we can extrude a circle and that circle extrudes all the way down and across this direction. Okay, and then it tapers off at the edge over here. So we can add this tapering at the end. We can just create this path uh, using the sweep tool and then at the very end uh, create that tapered edge. So I believe that's what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And, and when we use the sweep tool, uh, there is an easy way and, and a harder way. So the, where you actually place the sketch, where you're going to begin the sweep, makes a really big difference on how easy this turns out to be. So here we go. We're going to go for this. I'm going to go to the top view, and then I'm going to click on the sketch button, and I'm going to click on the top plane so that I'm actually drawing on the top plane. We're going to start our sketch on the y-axis that we can see from here. And I'm going to click a line, and I'm going to look at the dimensions of that line from the y-axis. And I believe that that is, let's see here, I need to pull this up so that we can actually see the dimensions. Uh, that is a dimension of, I might have to go back in there and delete, uh, 2.31. So two, yeah, it's already put in. So, oopsie, let's get rid of that one. I'm going to add these dimensions back. Put a dimension on this of 2.31 inches. And then from there, we know that it curves upwards and it kind of makes like a semicircle. So to make that semicircle easily, I'm just going to create a vertical line that is the diameter of the semicircle. And according to the dimensions, it says that it's 1.95 inches up. Okay, so it's 1.95 inches up, and I just make that line. If I click the circle tool, the neat thing about um, Fusion, or not Fusion 3, uh, Onshape, is that it automatically has this middle point. So I can just create my circle and snap it up to the middle point, hit the escape key, and then I'm going to trim using the trim button. I'm going to trim away this side of the semicircle that I don't need. And I'm also going to trim away these lines that I used to create it as well. So we're going to start to get a path here, not a shape, but we're starting to get a path of the pipe as it goes around. And for the next part, um, it looks like it's 2.06 inches down, but there's also a 0.25 uh, chamfer or extruded uh, tapered edge. Okay. So what we're going to do is we can actually have this do the math for us. So I'm going to type in 2.06 minus 0.25 and it'll already be like okay boss and type in 1.81 you could just type in 1.81 and uh you know hand calculate it but i'm kind of lazy whenever it comes down to that 
All right, so we're now, we have the base design. We're now ready to actually start using uh, the sweep function. So we're going to use a uh, circle, and we're going to move it around this direction. So click the green check mark, then make a separate sketch, and we're going to make a separate sketch on the right plane, and then we're going to make a circle, and that circle is going to be the outer diameter of the pipe, which in this case is 0 0.37 inches. Click first, sorry, 0 0.37 inches. Okay, finish that sketch, and we should have two things. Uh, we should have a circle, and we should have a path. This circle is going to get extruded along this path. So here we go. We're going to click the sweep command, and it's going to say faces and sketch regions to sweep. Click on the circle. Then there's going to be in red, and it says sweep path. You have to click on the red button, and then you have to individually select the paths. Click, 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 and then click the green check mark, and we now have a pipe that's going to go all the way around. Now, this is where uh, the lesson tells us to use the revolve button, and I think that's kind of dumb. So it, it probably works a lot better in Fusion 360, but since we're using a different software, here's what we need to do. The easiest way to do this is to just click the extrude button. With Onshape, you don't need a sketch if you need to extrude on top of a surface that already exists. So I'm going to click extrude, and I can automatically just extrude this part out a little bit further. I'm going to make that depth have a uh, depth of 0.25 inches and then we can also add a draft to it so it'll actually kind of either move in or it can move out let's go ahead and give that draft something like i don't know negative six degrees and let's see here oops let's see let's go three maybe if i just hit the flip button maybe it'll flip there we go okay so instead of going outwards we want it to kind of taper inwards so let's see if that's enough um Let's go six degrees, six and hit enter. That looks better. How about 10, 10 degrees? I think I might be pushing it there a little bit. Uh, it looks like, eh, we'll go with it. Let's just go with it. So this is gonna be our tapered edge. I'm gonna use 10 degrees for our taper. And instead of having to use the revolve command, which would take a whole lot more steps for on shape, that's all you have to do. That's all there is to it. So that makes our life a lot easier for that section and I'm all about making our life easier if we can. So I'm going to click the green check mark, and we now have this end as well. The last thing that we need to do is we need to hollow this out on the inside. So we're going to use the shell command. The shell command is up here. It is the one that looks like a little building that has a piece of it cut out. So the faces to remove. Um, we're going to remove this face, and we're going to remove this face. And it needs to have a thickness of, looks like, 0.1 inches. So, let's see, 0 0.37, 0 0.27. This object is not necessarily drawn to scale. So, let's actually, let's add our shell thickness. I want to make it actually a little bit smaller. Because it doesn't look nearly as, uh, doesn't look nearly as thick as it does in the, uh, in the thing. So, I'm gonna, let's make our shell thickness 0.05. That looks a little bit better. So I'm going to use a shell thickness of 0.05 for this one, and I'm going to click the green check mark. And this looks more like what we actually have in the picture uh, given to us by Project Lead the Way. So there you have it. There's our first part. Um, I'll show you guys how to actually make the threaded part in the next video. Uh, you guys have a great day, and we'll talk later.